Hi, this is Abhiram from Purdy School of Engineering. Today, I am going to be talking about our paper on image classification in the dark using quanta image sensors. Let me start by giving a brief overview of our paper. How does a conventional image classification pipeline look? We capture a well illuminated image using a conventional CMOS image sensor which is then passed into an image classifier. This pipeline works reasonably well, but it breaks down when the light level goes down. This is because at low light, the conventional CMOS image sensor cannot produce an image with high enough SNR for the image classifier to work. The conventional approach to solve this problem is to try and come up with a better classifier. This approach doesn't work at extremely dark situations because the conventional cameras do not possess the ability to produce images with high enough SNR in low light situations. We propose to solve this problem by replacing the conventional cameras by a new type of photon counting image sensors called quanta image sensors and complementing the sensor with a new classifier that is trained using a scheme called student teacher training scheme. Before we look at the proposed method in more detail, let me give a little background into quanta image sensors. Quanta image sensors or QIS are a type of single photon sensitive image sensors which were proposed by Dr. Eric Fossum in 2005 as a possible successor to the CMOS image sensors. Since then, over the last 15 years, a lot of work has been done to prove the feasibility and produce prototype sensors. Prototypes using single photon avalanche diodes or SPADs are being developed at the University of Edinburgh and EPFL and CMOS based prototypes are being developed at the Dartmouth College. QIS presents new imaging challenges because of its unique noise statistics and therefore there has been a lot of work going into the signal processing side of the sensor too. In this work, we'll use the QIS, which was developed at Dartmouth College and is currently being developed at Gigajet Technology. Compared to a standard CMOS image sensor, QIS has better dark current, better quantum efficiency, smaller pixel pitch, higher frame rate, and lower read noise, which gives QIS with a unique ability to count photons. While SPADs have very high frame rate, CIS-based QIS has lower dark current and better quantum efficiency. QIS has been shown to be effective for low light color imaging, high dynamic range imaging, and imaging a low light dynamic scene. In this paper, we show that QIS is effective for image classification too. This slide shows the general operating scheme of a QIS. Because of the higher frame rate, QIS can capture multiple frames to obtain a single image. Each frame gets digitized by an ADC. There are multiple modes for the ADC where you can choose binary mode or let's say a 3-bit mode based on your need. In this work, we use only a single frame to do the classification as a proof of concept to demonstrate the ability of QIS for low light image classification. Now let us look at the proposed method in more detail. Let us start by looking at what QIS brings to the table for low light color imaging. In this slide, we compare a simulated QIS image with a simulated CIS image at a light level of one photon per pixel. We can clearly see the superior SNR of the QIS image. A better sensor alone does not solve the problem. We can never obtain a completely clean signal because of the short noise arising from the randomness of the photon arrival process. Therefore, if we just replace CIS with QIS in the classification pipeline, we still won't be getting good results because the classifier expects clean images and it fails when the input is too noisy. One possible solution is to add a denoiser to the pipeline. This doesn't work because the input image is too noisy for the denoiser to generate a completely clean image. Therefore, we propose a completely new pipeline which uses a QIS 
and a classification network trained using a student-teacher training scheme. Our method uses the raw Bayer data from the sensor directly and does not require an image denoiser. Now, what is student-teacher training? We have a teacher classifier that is trained using clean images, let's say the ImageNet data. We want our student classifier to learn to obtain the same features from the noisy QIS data that the teacher classifier obtains from the clean images. This is forced by adding an L2 loss between the features of the noisy images and the corresponding clean images, which we call as the perceptual loss. This slide shows the entire training pipeline. We train the network with two losses, the cross entropy loss and the perceptual loss. The teacher network is used only for training and is thrown away while testing. Note that there is an extra layer in the student network. This layer acts as an entry layer that converts Bayer data into an RGB image as most of the existing image classifier use RGB image as input. And if we want to transfer learn, the input to the network should be an RGB image. The student teacher training is similar to knowledge distillation used in methods such as MobileNet. While existing methods are for training the student for the same task, in our method, the student and the teacher do different tasks. The teacher classifies a clean image and the student classifies noisy image. Now let us look at some results. We compare the proposed network with three other methods. The first one is the vanilla network where we have a pre-trained denoiser and a pre-trained classifier. The second method is the dirty pixels method. In this method, a denoiser and a classifier is trained end to end. The third one is the restoration network which has a pre-trained classifier and the denoiser is trained using perceptual loss and mean square error loss. On the left hand side, we compare the performance of all the competing methods. We use two versions of the proposed method and the dirty pixels method where we either use a shallow entry layer or a deep denoiser. We can see that the proposed method outperforms all the competing methods. On the right hand side, we can see the performance of a CIS compared to a QIS. We can clearly see that the QIS has a large advantage at low light, while the CIS can catch up when the light level increases. In this slide, let us see if the method works with real data. We show real QIS and CIS data obtained at light levels of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1 photon per pixel light levels. We can see that at 0.25 and 0.5 ppp, CIS signal is essentially noise, while QIS can obtain meaningful signal and therefore better classification. If you are noticed carefully, dirty pixels and the proposed method have similar network structure, with the only difference being how the network is trained. This may raise a question Is dirty pixels performing worse because of insufficient training? The plot on the left shows that it is not the case and the student teacher training leads to better validation loss. On the right, we can see that the gains from student teacher training is not specific to one network architecture. We can see that the three network architectures, VGG, ResNet and InceptionNet, all show improved performance when trained with student teacher training. Let me summarize the contributions we have made in this paper. We replace the entire image classification pipeline for low light images with a new pipeline. We replace the standard CMOS image sensors with a new type of photon counting image sensors called quanta image sensors. We also propose a new network that gets rid of the denoiser and is trained using a student teacher training scheme. Using both real and synthetic results, we have shown that this method is very effective for low light image classification. This work is supported in part by NSF. We would also like to extend our thanks for the support from Professor Eric Fossum of Dartmouth College and also Gigajet Technology for providing us with the QIS camera. Thank you.